university life will look different this September. So what can students expect? almost certainly going to be very different from what the traditional freshers um, looked like, let alone the whole university experience for this year. How much learning will be online? Because there hasn't been any sort of central guidance on this, lots of institutions based off of their local context have taken different approaches to what um, their percentage of online and face-to-face -face teaching will look like. The majority of UK universities are preparing to provide in-person teaching this autumn. However, apart from courses that require practical elements like medicine, many lectures, certainly for the first term, will be online. UEA, I think we're promising at least two hours physical if the regulations allow it out of the uh, out of the week, but I suspect it will be quite a lot more. Will Freshers' Week happen? Aside from education, the social elements of uni life have been a big draw for students over the years. But while student club nights and packed SU bars might be out of the question, around 87% of universities will still be offering face-to-face -face social activities where possible, including outside events and sporting activities. We're planning to do pretty much everything that we've done previously but there are long videos explaining how to wander down the lanes and how to queue and how to do all those sorts of things. What will an academic day look like? Let's think about one-to-ones, tutorials. Well, tutorials will probably take place via Zoom or Teams or something like that. Government regulations don't allow us to do big classes. Session almost certainly will take place physically with social distancing and their seminars, their small group seminars and um, labs. Will universities charge full tuition fees? Despite petitions to change this, the government says university students in England will still have to pay full tuition fees, even if their course is taught online this year. I think universities should really think about different approaches to tuition fees, such as a reduction in tuition fees, the ability for students to redo their exams all their year without paying extra. And I think there also needs to be a willingness to reimburse where students have lost out on essential teaching. Will student finances adapt to changing circumstances? Student loans are calculated on household earnings, but if the income of a parent drops by more than 15%, then a student can qualify for a bigger loan. Almost every university has a scheme to help students who do end up in, pover in impoverished circumstances. And the new aspect of those schemes is making sure people have access to broadband and IT technology. How will student accommodation work this year? Some universities plan to create student social bubbles, grouping fewer students in flat shares and with people in their subjects where possible. A student flat at UEA holds between either eight or 10 people, and that's a household. So the idea is that uh, People come into that uh, flat and they remain uh, under the government advice of, of household separation. Student bodies like the NUS are also advising students to inquire about rent reductions and tenancy agreements. A lot of students will have lost part-time jobs and, and sources of incomes that they really relied on. I think universities really need to endeavour to make accommodation as affordable as possible. Um, so that means rent reductions. That also means being able to be flexible with tenancies and contracts. So if there is a second wave, hopefully not, um, students are able to have that flexibility to move back home. Will exams still take place? The technology is, is a tricky one for exams. I don't know anyone who's really managed to do it to their satisfaction. The name of the game in COVID is to be ready for the possibility that you don't take physical exams. And the way you get ready is you, you write down all your learning objectives and you make sure you're, you can assess them by coursework and exam. What will campuses look like? Expect lots of hand sanitizers and one-way systems. Some universities will also provide face masks and thermometer readings. Should students defer this year? I'm convinced deferral is a bad option for students. And firstly, what else are you going to do? Because the normal options, would be, which would be to get a job or to, um, or to travel, you know, they, they're a bit contraindicated at the moment. Secondly, if you defer this year, you're joining in 2021, and that's when the demographic de deficit comes back up again. So you're going to be joining quite a busy cohort. But for any student returning or starting this year, it's important to get clarity from their university to understand what exactly their timetable will look like.
I think going forward, universities have to be really flexible with enabling students to have that choice in the fair if they so wish to. Um, and I think it's important that on the side of universities, they don't pressure students to thinking that they will have to come back to university um, despite all of these changes and just be okay with it. Students have a right to want to have the student experience that they wanted and that they signed up for. Despite the pandemic, this year a record amount of 18-year-olds, 4 in 10, applied for university and whilst packed lectures and packed SU bars might not be on the cards, COVID-19 restrictions and safety procedures will hopefully only be in place for a small period of time during a student's entire degree.